All right, that's everybody in. Hey, look, it's seven o'clock, everybody. So we are going to start sharp because we do have quite a bit of material to get through tonight, as you'll see. My name's Aaron Meikle. I'm from Beef and Lamb New Zealand. I'm um, facilitating tonight, which just basically trying to keep us to time and introducing our speakers as we go. And I will introduce them as we go. I'm not going to do that all um, right now. Just a couple of uh, housekeeping meetings you should have seen, I think, as you joined, that uh, we are recording. And the plan for that is we'll make it available um, on our YouTube channel later in a series of shorter videos. So if there's something you miss, you can go back and have a look. Um, asking questions is obviously pretty important for some of the stuff. If you want something clarified or you want to comment on something. And so we've got two options for that. You can put a question in the chat and one of our team will be monitoring that and we'll put those questions um, to our, our speakers either during the end of each section or at the end of the, the whole session. Um, you'll also see up there for those of you who wish to, and it's a more anonymous option, there's a mobile phone number. You can text a question to that as well if you wish and we'll be keeping a, a track of those as well. Um, yeah, so look, um, we'll make it available. I'm not going to muck around because we want to get in and do some introductions and cover a fair bit of material. So to introduce the webinar, um, to explain what we're going to cover, and because we have limited time, what we're not going to cover, a welcome to the webinar, uh, Karina Jordan, who a number of you I think will know. She's Beef and Lamb New Zealand's General Manager for the North Island, who's going to um, set the scene for the webinar. Thanks, Karina. Thanks, Aaron. Hey, welcome everyone to this joint uh, Overseer and Beef and Lamb webinar. Uh, the reason why we pulled this webinar together is we were co I'm cognizant that there's a lot of concerns out there at the moment around um, what's happening in the climate change um, policy space. So we've had the Hiwaki Kanai recommendations um, proposed through the government and today the Climate Change Commission um, released their report on those uh, recommendations. Um, Beef and Lamb has been partnering with processes um, to run farmer facing events across the country. Um, obviously with the COVID situation, some farmers are choosing um, not to engage um, face to face. So we wanted to also provide um, a webinar opportunity. Um, in relation to Hiwaki Kanoa, uh, what we're aiming for is 12,000 uh, sheep and beef farming businesses um, or, you know, 100% of our um, you know, dairy and sheep and beef um, fund businesses that meet the HEWOC criteria to know their greenhouse ga gas numbers by the end of the year. The reason why that, why that milestone is important is because it shows um, responsibility in relation to agriculture in the space and hopefully will fend off um, being popped into the ETS or further um, more draconian regulation being placed on us. So we're super happy to partner with Overseer. Um, I think latest uh, numbers that I have from Overseer is that around about 2,800 um, sheep and beef farmers um, have their numbers through Overseer um, and a significant portion, obviously, of the dairy industry. Um, the rest of the numbers that we've got um, are coming through Beef and Lamb's GHG calculator. So we're just supporting all farmers to know their numbers with whatever tools available to them. Um, obviously, Overseer is a fantastic on-farm decision support tool. It includes not only um, greenhouse gas emissions profiles, um, but also um, you know, risks to fresh water. So a tool which combines both um, emissions to air and water um, hi uh, highly, is highly valuable for, for farming businesses and will help, will help you make really sound decisions. We um, are not gonna cover Hiwaki Kanoa in great detail tonight because we've got a lot of uh, material that we're gonna cover in relation to Overseer. Um, if though, however, if you do have questions around pricing in Hiwaki Kanoa, um, we are happy to pick those up and I'll be present for the whole webinar. And so um, if you've got any killer questions, I'm, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to grab those and, and give them a crack. What we are going to cover tonight is an introduction to Overseer FM. Um, we're also going to do a wee bit of a summary around um, what we're seeing um, in relation to GHG profiles come through the Overseer tool and that will give you an indication of where potentially you could be sitting in relation to your peers. So a super helpful approach there. Alice is going to take us through a wee Overseer uh, FM demonstration about how it works and where you can find the numbers. And then we're going to talk about some mitigation options that sheep and beef farmers particularly um, have it available to them. But obviously if you're a dairy farmer, these also are, are highly relevant. Uh, so we're talking about eco-efficiency. Um, that's a big word, but it, it pretty much probably just sums up the stuff you're doing already. So, you know, looking at your lambing percentages, growing your animals out, making sure they're healthy and getting them off farm fast, that type of thing. And we'll talk a little bit about um, more, you know, 
direct mitigation that you can put in place in relation to methane, nitrous oxide and carbon oxide. And lastly, we're going to end up talking a little bit about sequestration. So that's it from me. And I'm going to hand back to um, Aaron. We actually do have um, a first poll too, uh, just to make sure you're all still awake. Awesome. Thank you, Karina. So as you say, for those of you that have just joined us, you may have missed it. There's, you can put questions in chat or there's a text, text number there if you want to send it in uh, anonymously so that nobody else sees it. But we also are going to run some of these polls and you'll see a few of you answering already um, through this. These are anonymous. We don't know who gives what answer. Um, and we're not doing anything with the information. We're not keeping an official record of it. It's just for um, compare and contrast and for as we talk through some of the information later on, it'll um, make some more sense, get an idea of where things are. So looks like uh, most of you have seen that already. The poll's up on screen. Just click away if you want to. We'll give it another 30 seconds or so, um, and our speakers may re refer to it as we go through. Just before, or just while you're doing that, though, I'm going to take the opportunity to um, introduce our, our next speaker on, on our list. Um, we, As we said, Karina's explained, we're joined by Overseer. So um, our next speaker is Kayo Seiki from uh, the Overseer team. Um, she is the Business Partnerships Manager. So Kayo, I think you're on. Before we flick to the next slide, just while that's going through, do you want to just explain what you do, what your role is in Overseer? Yes, uh, thanks, Aaron. Um, uh, basically, my job is to, um, I guess, um, to create tomorrow's overseer out of today's, making overseer really useful for farmers to support farmers' um, uh, environmental uh, sustainability aspirations. So I look at um, uh, partnership opportunities with other companies uh, so that um, uh, we can add additional value to overseer service. Um, and insight for action is uh, one of my key focus areas at the moment. Awesome. Thank you, Kayo. So I think um, we're going to stop the poll now. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of the range of, of people that are on here tonight with their um, where their, their emissions range are, or if they know it, or I think I suspect a number of you don't have farms, so it's a, a non-applicable. But um, there will be more polls there on this one was just to give you a bit of an introduction to the, to the tool. So... We'll move on now and into Kayo's section. I think if we move on to the next slide and if we can get that poll off the screen, Katrina. Okay, um, Aaron, let me know if you can't hear me properly. I can hear you, clear as a bell. Great, thank you. Um, first and foremost, uh, what does Overseer do to support your farming business? Overseer FM is all about providing choices for farmers to inform your decision-making and farm planning. In the climate change context, it helps you identify emissions management actions that work for your specific farm. Importantly, it covers both nutrient budgets and greenhouse gas emissions, taking a farm systems approach and helps avoid pollution swapping. Overseer FM also plays a key role in supporting farm assurance programs, such as NZFAP Plus, and increasingly sustainability reporting, for instance, climate-related disclosures by banks. How many of you are considering NZFAP Plus? In a recent survey by Beef and Lamb New Zealand, 38% of farmers indicated interest in becoming NZFAP Plus certified. Overseer FM makes it easier to join your national sustainability program with its farm impact report covering nutrient management, GHG emissions, and sequestration features. Next slide, please. Here are some facts about Overseer FM. Its key design principle is the use of data that is known and accessible to farmers. This means that you have the information needed to set up a farm in Overseer FM. Once your farm is set up, it automatically generates nutrient budgets and greenhouse gas results. You can assess the impact of management practice or land use change over time. 
This includes the carbon sequestration potential. Using our extensive data coverage, we can generate various insights such as trends and the benchmarking. What are your greenhouse gas emissions results and how do they compare with your fellow sheep, beef and deer farmers? I will show you some data shortly. Another feature is catchment farm group aggregated and the benchmarking reporting. This gives you an opportunity to share information, collaborate and learn from each other. Now, I would like to share three examples, data coverage, benchmarking, and timeline features. Next slide. First, over CFM data coverage. In these graphs, blue indicates dairy, gray, sheep, beef, and deer, orange, mixed farm types, and the yellow crop and horticulture. The number of farms with year-end analysis continues to grow. They almost doubled in the last five years. It has both good cross-sector and regional coverage. Your sector is represented in most of the regions with top five regions being Canterbury, Hawke's Bay, Southland, Waikato, and Horizons. As of today, over 3,000 sheep, beef, and deer, and mixed farms already have both nutrient budgets and greenhouse gas emissions results in over CFM. It represents approximately 40% of the data sets and continues to grow, enabling more insights such as benchmarking. Next slide. Second, benchmarking. Here are two examples of distribution graphs for greenhouse gas. One is for all farm types and the other for sheep, beef, and deer farms. The horizontal axis shows the distribution of greenhouse gas emissions results, and the vertical axis shows the number of farms with these results. Greenhouse gas emissions include methane, nitrous oxide, and carbon dioxide, all expressed as carbon dioxide equivalent per hectare per year. What does it tell us? In general, the more intensive a farming practice, such as higher stocking rate, more supplementary feed brought in, the higher the greenhouse gas emissions. The majority of sheep, beef and deer farms fall under three to five metric ton per hectare range, whereas the results show 4.5 to 12 metric tons when all farm types are included. These are high level results and further detail is available. When you open your Overseer FM analysis, you can compare your results with others using different criteria such as farm type, region, etc. Results for separate gases, methane, nitrous oxide and carbon dioxide are also available as well as the carbon sequestration potential. Next slide. In these examples, a purple bar shows where I stand in terms of greenhouse gas emissions results. As a farmer, I can see I'm not doing too badly compared with all other farm types across New Zealand. I can also see how I compare with my fellow sheep, beef, and deer farms. The obvious question is, why am I close to the high end? 
I can now start looking into the possible reasons and what actions I could take to reduce my emissions. Next slide. The last example is what we call Overseer FM Timeline Report. In addition to providing a trend over time, we wanted to create a feature that helps you tell your farm story and demonstrate good things farmers have done and are doing. Using year-end analyses across different years, it shows the changes you've made over the years and how they affected your results, as well as the changes you plan to make and the direction of travel. This essentially audits progress that you have made in implementing plans and enables you to demonstrate improvements. Next slide. To summarize, Overseer FM is all about choices for farmers. Using our extensive data coverage, we create insights for action, such as benchmarking, to inform your decision making and farm planning. You can create a farm group, such as catchment groups, irrigation schemes, processes, etc., and view aggregated and benchmarking reporting for the group. You can specify who should have access to your information and use it to collaborate and learn from your peer groups. It also helps you tell your farm story, demonstrating good things you have been doing and you are planning to do. Now I hand over to Alistair to demonstrate Overseer FM features in more detail. Thank you, Kayo. So I'll just uh, do a quick introduction of Alistair, as we, he's got the slides up already, but Alistair Taylor is joining us now, and as you heard, he's from the Overseer team, um, Business Development Manager at Overseer, Alistair. So um, I guess the same as we asked Kaio, what do you do day to day? To yeah, thanks, Aaron. Your, um, I, just, I just noticed that where my camera is, it looks like I've got a halo, which is far from the truth, <laughs> but um, we'll ignore that bit for the rest of the uh, for the webinar. Um, yeah, so my role essentially is is leading the, uh, the customer relationship uh, that we have uh, from uh, Overseer Limited. Um, that ranges from obviously working with individual farmers uh, right the way through to the people like beef and lamb, meat companies, milk companies, catchment groups, uh, irrigation schemes and the like to uh, look at, a, a, you know, I guess, two things, um, a bit like what Kaya was talking about, um, making sure people are aware of the things that are within the software, um, because if anything, we tend to be um, criticised for moving a bit too quickly sometimes and adding new tools. Um, and then the other one is getting great ideas from people and, um, and looking at adding them. And uh, you know, most of the tools that we'll go through uh, through this demonstration um, have come from farmers and consultants and meat companies and the like um, saying, hey, I wonder if you could do this. And um, our, uh, our development team have uh, been able to do that. So, um, you know, it's about making the software more accessible. Uh, and as Kai has gone through, making it more useful for farmers in the industry. So going awesome. from there, as we say, we're going to go through and just do a, a quick demonstration. Um, it's great to do these things actually in the software itself, but um, to be conservative and, and ensure that the tech works, it's a bit easier just to do it uh, through some slides. Before we get into that, though, I think it's always quite useful in these situations, actually, just to cover what Overseer really is, because, you know, it's been around since the 1990s. Um, most people became aware of Overseer in the sort of early 2000s. Um, you know, we've been modeling greenhouse gases since 2003, um, back when Stuart Leggard and his team were doing all great work looking at uh, food miles uh, the first time round. I guess that seems to be staging a bit of a recurrence right now. Um, but Overseer is there to really help us understand how efficiently a, a farm is using the nutrients within it. Um, and, and going back to that slide that Kayo touched on briefly earlier, you know, where you've got that complex system that you guys have on your farms, that you've got livestock grazing right the way throughout it. You know, you might be taking supplements off one part of it and feeding them out on another. You might be bringing supplements in 
to the farm system. You're certainly adding fertilizers. Um, we've got legumes within there, hopefully adding some nutrients as well. Um, so that enables us to understand the level of nutrients needed to maintain soil fertility and, and keep the farm functioning. Um, as I say, we're then able to look at you know, the, the N, the P and the other nutrients losses to the, to the atmosphere and increasingly obviously looking at the greenhouse gas losses as well. So then we most usefully we can then sit there and go, okay, well, that's where we are now. Let's have a look at where we want to get to and how we're going to make some changes. And we can very easily sit there and, 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 and put new management practices or farm systems into, into the software to really try and understand what the implications of those might be and to provide insights which can be useful for your farm plan without having to go through one, two, three, four years of actually implementing it on the farm uh, to find out what's uh, going to happen. So just to confuse things, because we've now done that, we've just briefly talked about what Overseer is. And now I'm going to hand over to uh, Jane to uh, talk about eco-efficiency. Thanks, Al. Um, if you want to go on to the next slide, thank you. you. And Jane, do you just want to introduce yourself then, since you've, um, you people are taking over my role? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm Jane Crystal. I'm the Principal Science Advisor for Farm Systems and Environment with Beef and Lamb New Zealand. Um, so I do a bit of work um, in regional policy and also national policy, looking at um, explaining the impacts of sheep and beef farms um, on the environment, so water quality and also GHG emissions, and um, in explaining how overseer and other tools are used to um, mitigate some of those um, emissions. And, and part of that is um, this, this document that we've got here. This is part of um, our Beef and Land Farm Plan, and it's also um, available in um, fact sheets on our website. And so this is just some areas for consideration, areas on your farm that you can um, optimise efficiency, on, on farm efficiency, um, to get some benefits in terms of either reducing GHG emissions or um, reducing the emissions per unit of product. So there's five areas here, um, genetics, animal health, improving your lambing, calving, falling percentages, improved growth rates and reduced time to slaughter and pasture and soil management. So if we look in those a bit more under genetics, there's things like selecting for low methane sheep or having a terminal sire to increase your young stock growth rates. Um, genetic improvement for, for um, lamb and calf survival. Um, and then with pastures, there's improved pasture species and, and selection for pastures and other um, plants that are suited to the environment that you're farming in. In terms of animal health, one of the key things, what we really want to do with, with GHG emissions, the emissions from, um, from our animals are basically related to the amount of feed that they eat. So what we really want to do is make sure that every unit of feed that the animal consumes is converted into product so that when you, they're, they're eating, they're using that to grow, um, produce milk, um, etc., we don't want um, the animal having to use that for things like keeping warm or fighting off um, subclinical disease. So in terms of animal health, that if we keep um, animals in optimal health, then we can increase the efficiency of that food, feed use. Um, uh, and then we've got things like uh, improved lambing and calving. So we're ensuring that animals are at optimal mating weight and condition score, providing um, appropriate shelter on, the, on your calving, lambing and fording paddocks. Um, flushing use and then checking your ram's um, reproductive fitness. In terms of growth rates and reduced time to slaughter, pregnancy scanning and preferential treatment of multiples, adequate shelter on lambing paddocks and routine lambing beets. Pasture and soil management, we've got um, having a pasture renewal program, liaising with qualified fertilizer specialists to prepare a fertilizer plan and nutrient budget. Um, pasture and soil management to optimise utilisation. Part of that can be reticulated water and improved, improved subdivision so that we're improving pasture efficiency. And then early identification and management of soil and pasture pests. So a lot of these things are things that you're doing already. And when we're looking at um, having an action plan, if we go on to the next slide, part of what we want to do is part of our um, beef and lamb 
environmental component of the farm plan is to have an action plan. And one of those um, is this document here, and that's your action plan for your climate change and greenhouse gases. So under eco-efficiency, you might have genetics, you might have a terminal sire, you might have an animal well, um, health plan, and you might be um, using a fertilizer rep to optimize your fert um, applications. All these sorts of things are things that you're doing already and are things that um, that you can put into your action plan. So it's not all things like um, reducing stock numbers and that sort of thing. So I'll um, hand back to Aaron. I think we're going to have a, um, a poll now. Thanks, Jane. Yep, we will in just a minute. Oh, it's already coming up. But I just um, one question for you, Jane. Um, the foreman that you took, you sort of clarified we run... Um, What's the name of the work? People can attend workshops, free workshops through Beef and Land New Zealand if they want to work through that, uh, their greenhouse gas number and their action plan. Yeah, that's right. So we've got um, farm plan workshops and we're um, focusing on the climate change um, chapter um, and they're available around the regions. Um, and Karina um, can probably talk to um, how to find out where the, your local ones are. See if she comes back on, or they're on the, the Beef and Land New Zealand website if you have a look under events, or give us a call or contact your local extension manager. Um, I think the key thing, and just to stress there too, Jane, is that the list of op options you had there is not a recipe, it's a must do, it's a, a menu effectively, it's some ideas some people are already doing, but that's it's, um, and it may not work in all environments, but they're just some, some options that are out there. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. All right, look, before we go on, so we're going to do two things now. Sorry, we're making Katrina and, and Alice to jump back and forward a wee bit, but we are going to run another wee poll. Um, Jane's talked a wee bit about eco-efficiency options. And again, this is anonymous and it's um, it's just out of interest, but we're just interested to know in our audience tonight um, which of those you're already doing or have thought about or maybe going to do. And this is, um, yeah, so it's up there. The poll's underway and people are already hooking into it but while we're doing that just to give you a moment um Alistair you're doing the next section but I think it's probably not a bad time to throw in one of the first questions we've had tonight which is um, a farm who has run both the beef and lamb New Zealand greenhouse gas calculator and overseer and come up with numbers that have a, a reasonably significant difference um I guess I'm going to throw it to you what's the reason <laughs> yeah. for that is that something to be concerned about is that how you game the system yeah <laughs> Yeah, I think I, th I think, and it's um, um, you can jump in here, Jane or Karina, if you want to uh, correct me. But uh, I think yeah, this is this is one of the real key reasons why we're running this uh, webinar, and why I think you know the beef and lamb team and ourselves thought it was so important. I think you know everyone within beef and lamb will say you know the 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 beef and lamb calculator is about getting a I guess a rough guide as to what your number may be. Um, you know, you look at the amount of, you know, for the, for the gentleman that's, that's done the data, you look at what you've entered into the beef and lamb calculator compared to the data which we require for you to run an overseer analysis, and that probably gives you your answer. Um, I think, you know, what we've seen, I think, is there's 12 or 13 calculators, Jane, that have been approved now, um, and, and, you know, they're all going to turn out slightly different numbers um, because of the way the modelling is done. Um, and, and there is a document there if you're bored enough to want to go and read it to look at the comparisons between them. Um, but it sort of says it, it makes that difference in definition between something like Overseer as a complex calculator um, and then something like the, the Beef and Land calculator as a more simple one just to give you a, a rough guide. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and I think um, what we sort of say to people is um, to make sure you're comparing apples with apples. So if you're comparing with your neighbour, you want to know what tool they've used. And also if you're when you're when you're doing it yourself and you're doing one year and then you're, you know, the next year you want to be using that same tool, you can't, you don't want to use overseer and then use beef and lamb and say you've had a lovely 20% reduction. Uh, but with Haywalker Economa going forward, what will happen is that there will be a, um, a, a central one source of the truth if there's going to be any um, charge on, on emissions. Um, and these other tools will um, will hopefully all feed into that one tool. There, there won't be multiple um, versions of the truth um, if we're going to be charged through Haywalker Kanoa. And Karina, for those of you, Karina's posted a wee bit extra detail and some further background in the, in the chat as well. You're most welcome to have a look at that. So, um, yeah, we'll close that poll off there. Thank you, Katrina. And uh, yeah, interesting to see um, the, the number of things that are, people are going on. I think this is a key concept in our farm environment plan and this greenhouse gas stuff that a lot of the time it's about not a 180 degree change in farm policy. It's often just um, doing what you're, in some cases, what you're already doing and enhancing a wee bit more. So 
Look, we're, we're ticking along well for time, but we will keep going. Um, as I say, keep putting the questions in chat if you want or text them into the number that is sitting there in chat as well. But we're going to move on. I think we're back to you, Alistair, with yep. the next section. We are, yeah. And, and just to touch on before we get into the full um, demonstration, really this sort of uh, comment or, or description which Kayo chucked out there earlier, which is pollution swapping. Um, and this is, a, I'm going to make the apology now, this is from a, from a dairy farming example, um, but essentially it shows the risk that we can have if we're only focusing on one thing. So if we look at the uh, bottom of the screen here, um, sorry, no, top of the screen, year end 2015. So this was where the farm was sitting in the purple highlighted box um, in 2015. Um, farm in the Waikato, not that far away from uh, Mystery Creek, where we should, all should have been a couple of weeks ago. Um, and obviously for them, and back in 2014, 2015, um, fresh water, nitrogen loss was the, the biggest thing in their mind. So they were looking at going, heck, you know, we've got a, an end loss of 88 kilos per hectare. We need to do something about that. Um, let's have a look at mitigations we put in. Worked with their consultant, and they came up with this barn scenario at the top. So by putting a barn in over the winter, putting the animals in the barn, they could reduce their end loss to 43. Yes, there was going to be a bit of an increase in greenhouse gas emissions, um, but it was also going to reduce the P loss as well. So, you know, it looks like a good option. Let's go ahead and do that. Went ahead and did it, got it built for 2017. And as you can see down the bottom there, uh, where we've got the, uh, the red highlighted box. Oops, we managed to get the, uh, the, uh, the end down by... Uh, 22 down to 66 not as far as we thought we'd get to to start with but hey we're getting there um p went up and um greenhouse gases doubled um and this was purely based off the fact that you know you've got to look at the scenarios that we've got here they were planning on feeding one particular type of feed they ended up feeding soya bean meal the inventory allows for the deforestation cost of soya bean growing in South America. And so suddenly they absolutely blew out their greenhouse gas number. And then as you can see over the last few years, they've managed to make significant improvements to their system and to bring that number back down into 18,000. But it's just that risk of, of really, even if we're just focusing on greenhouse gases or we're just focusing on nitrogen, you know, we've got that danger that we're just gonna end up swapping one set level of pollution uh, for another. Uh, and, and I guess fundamentally for me, I always come back to um, a reasonably simple thing at the moment, which is, you know, with, with urea prices where they are, a kilo of N is about $3. So, you know, 88 times $3 is quite a lot of money to have leaking out of your system. Even 46 times $3 is quite a lot of money to have leaking out of your system. And you've still got those sort of uh, uh, mathematics going on around the greenhouse gases as well. So it's about keeping those nutrients within your farm uh, and enabling you to make a uh, product out of them, whether that be wool or meat or whatever, um, and, and really being able to uh, build that efficiency. Almost regardless of anything else, really, that's, you know, that's what we're aiming for. We're aiming for, for economic and environmental efficiency. So let's hook on. So if we want to get to Overseer, we can go to overseer.org.nz, um, our website, and you'll find at the uh, top right-hand corner of that page, um, after you've got past the wonderful video of uh, Hayden Padden zooming around Ensclaw Station, um, then you'll be able to get to the login or sign up screen. Once you get here, as I say, you know, if, you're logged, if you've already logged in before, you can log in here or you can register. Um, one of the most common questions to our help desk still remains, um, I've forgotten my password. Um, there is this forgot password button, which our, our IT guys tell me is the correct way of asking someone if they've forgotten their password. Um, but it's obviously not something that resonates with some other people. So if, if anyone's got a bright idea as to what else we could put in there to get people to realize that's the button for resetting your password, um, put something in chat for me because that would be really helpful. Um, but yeah, you can reset your password if you need to, um, but hopefully you'll be able to get in. And if you get into the software, you should see something like this. So um, you should be able to see your farm. In this case, we've got an example, uh, sheep and beef farm down in, in Southland. Um, we can see any publications and we can see any farm groups uh, that you might be part of. If we click through then onto our farm, we then get presented by this dashboard. And this is something that we introduced uh, about a year ago, really to try and present back to you as the farmer, 
um, as much information about your account as possible. We're very aware that most farmers are, you know, working with other people, your fertilizer company, a consultant, um, a family member, whatever, to, to use Overseer. There's some farmers that are just doing it on their own. Uh, but this way you can see, you know, a lot of information about what's going on in your account. So up in the top left hand corner, you can see this box called analyses. Um, and you can see in there, you know, what work's been done in your account. You can see the details about your subscriptions and when it runs out. Um, you can see the latest farm activity. So again, you know, if you've got other people doing work in your farm account, you want to see what they've been doing. So I can see that Kayo has been doing some work on FEP 2025 uh, recently. Um, and, and I can you know, maybe have a chat with her about what she's done or go and look at the audit log and see what's happened. Up here, I can get a, a quick snapshot, if you like, of, of, of any of the analyses, but it always starts with the, uh, the most recent uh, year end analysis. Uh, and we can see the farm map and we can see some details uh, running through the, uh, the simple parts of the farm. But then we can go through and have a look at some of these more interesting bits where we're able to do some comparisons um, of how the farm is performing over time. Uh, so comparing the farm with itself. Uh, and that means, you know, we can look at a whole range of metrics. So we, you know, obviously tonight we're focused on the greenhouse gas and we can look at the constituent gases, but we can also look at nitrogen loss, N surplus, P loss, all of these other areas um, and see how the farm is, is performing uh, over time. And the gray line uh, represents the average for the information in, in the database nationally. So we've got about 110,000 analyses within Overseer FM. Uh, now, um, about 14,000 farm accounts, so roughly half the farms, slightly over far, half the farms uh, in New Zealand. Uh, so we're looking at a pretty robust data set now um, uh, within, within the software to be able to compare yourself with when you look at that average. And that then brings us to, in the bottom right hand corner of that dashboard page, you've got the, uh, the farm benchmarking bit, which, which Kayo touched on earlier. Um, and, and this enables you to look at a whole range of metrics for your farm to see where you sit. Um, and I think it's interesting because I think if you look at if you look at most of these slides, you know, here we're looking at year end 2020 uh, for all enterprises and all regions. Um, and what we can see is this very, uh, very sort of marked double bell curve, which is, you know, here's our sheep, beef and deer farms. Here's our mixed and dairy farms. So it, it kind of reflects what you'd expect to see. Um, when you're looking at, uh, at, a, at a chart like this. Uh, and then we can drill down and we can look at just the sheep, beef and deer farms, or we could look at just the mixed farms if you think you fit better into uh, that particular category and you can see where you sit. Um, and then you can actually drill right the way down. In this case, we're drilling right the way down to uh, Southland uh, and seeing where this farm sits um, compared to uh, the other farms that have got results, which are sheep, beef and deer farms in, uh, in Southland. So jumping back to our dashboard again, we're going to go and have a look at an analysis uh, and we're going to look at how to create and monitor a plan. So there are there are three different, well, four different types of analyses. We've got year ends, which is sort of your reporting type things that you might be reporting uh, to a certification scheme, to FAP Plus, as, as Kaya mentioned earlier, to your regional council, to your meat company. Um, you've got predictive analysis, which is sort of your what ifs. Um, where are we going to try and get to? And scenarios are kind of the same. They're kind of interchangeable. Um, but, you know, again, just looking at, you know, what might you do in your, in your farm system? Um, you can then add a date to predictive analyses and that turns them into a plan. And in this case, we've, we've got a plan here, which is a uh, plan for uh, 2025. But the easiest, the, easy way to, the easiest way to create a new analysis once you've got one to start from is to hit the copy button. Uh, which is underneath each of the analyses which are there um, and you can then decide what you want to create it as you can put a year against it if you want to and put the name and as you can see here you can select what you want to copy from it so you can take everything or you can leave fodder crops out or you can leave supplements out or whatever and, and make some changes um, and if you've got forests within there from the carbon stock tool which we'll come to later um, you can um, look at how much you age those by as well when you're taking that copy now, if you want to compare two different analyses just to understand uh, the difference, you can either do that through going through the results section within each analysis, or you can do it off this front screen where we've got these two highlighted uh, in red uh, compare uh, buttons. 
And by doing that, we can compare any analysis with any other analysis or also any other publication. So a publication is, is a means by which you can share a read-only version of an analysis with an entity that you don't necessarily want to give full access to your account. So as you can see with this one, we've, we've sent a couple of publications to Environment Southland. Um, now, you know, this farm's got irrigation in, in, its, in its fictitious world, so it's got a consent for that uh, irrigation, and it's having to share some information with Environment Southland. I might not want to give them full access to my account, so I can publish to them, and that only gives them the information which they require to ensure that they can understand what's happening within the farm system. But you can use those to uh, do a comparison with uh, as well. And I've not noted down who I'm handing to here, but I'm guessing Jane. Yeah, thanks, Al. <laughs> Good guess. <Yes. laughs> yeah. Um, so we've got here, um, and so Al's talking about some scenario testing and, and comparing. Um, some of those might be looking at some um, mitigation options. So as part of the farm plan, we have um, a list of, of mitigation options. This, like the um, eco-efficiency list, is not exhaustive. This is just some. And it's also um, an area that there's quite a lot of research that's ongoing and, um, and that there will be in the future. So some of this um, in terms of um, mitigation options might be related to methane only or nitrous oxide only carbon dioxide or a mix of the of the three. So in terms of if we look at methane production, some of the um, the mitigation options come under genetics. So we've got currently have uh, RAMs that we can be selected for low methane production. And we're just starting um, research into looking at beef animals for, for um, identifying low methane production. There's low emissions feeds. So one of them is um, one of the examples is forage rape. And when you've got forage rape as a sole feed, um, it, we can get reductions of 30% less methane per kilogram of dry matter intake compared to um, a ryegrass. And then fodder beets, another one that results in lower um, methane emissions per unit of feed, but it needs to be fed at about 75% of the diet. Um, so then there can be animal health concerns. Um, there, in terms of high input systems, so we have fewer options for at some of our extensive farm systems, but our higher input systems, there's management, um, improved management of nitrogen fertilizer, um, reducing purchase supplementary feed or um, um, analyzing the efficiency of those supplementary feeds, improved storage um, of effluent for, um, for dairy farms and others who have effluent storage, and then farming to the grass curve, there's the um, forage supply um, and optimizing feed efficiency. Um, we've got changes to the stock ratio, so we're optimizing the stocking policy to match the pasture growth curve and then um, improving the productivity of beef cattle. So some of that is also to incorporate dairy um, origin animals um, into the system. And then future options for methane that are currently um, along the research chain are vaccines, bolus, drench. There are some fed feed additives like 3NOP is currently available to, for use with dairy animals um, and then genetic selection for those other species, so cattle and then hopefully in the future deer. Uh, in terms of nitrous oxide, there are low emissions feeds for nitrous oxide, plantain is one of those. Um, it needs to be a, at the moment they're thinking about 30% of the, um, the sward for it to be effective and then fodder beet um, has a lower nitrogen content um, so that as well as the methane reduction, it also has um, a reduction in nitrous oxide emissions. Um, you can reduce the urinary nitrogen losses, so that has an impact on um, nitrous oxide emissions, so changing to low end feeds, uh, reducing the stocking rate and the total um, urine um, on the farm, and then use of nitrification inhibitors. Um, so we did have DCD, currently not available. Um, but in the future, there will be um, hopefully um, other options available. And then fertilizer. So we're looking at having um, appropriate timing and rate of application, fertilizer applications, optimizing nitrogen fertilizer applications, and use of urease inhibitors. Then with carbon dioxide emissions, some of these um, will um, uh, don't come under Haywalk Economic, they would come under your. Um, 
the emissions are under fuel and other options rather than um, livestock. So we've got um, green electricity sources, um, then reduced fuel uses. So we could have uh, electric vehicles, use of drones, um, ensuring that um, trucks are full. So having a full um, load for livestock or produce and then reducing transportation of animals and feed. Uh, targeting um, lime use so that we've got soil test and um, targeted lime applications to maximise the effectiveness um, and excess or in ineffective liming adds carbon dioxide emissions from the manufacturing process as well. The same thing is true for um, chemical use so there's carbon dioxide produced in the manufacturing transport and application uh, and then future options of electric vehicles so electric farm vehicles, tractors etc. Um, we the, In the farm plan, um, if we go to the next slide, thanks Al, we have the same um, form for um, your actions to date um, underneath those, um, those other different greenhouse gases. Uh, and I think we now, if we go back to Aaron for a poll. Yep. Just before we get on to that, because we are ahead of time, we're going to, um, a, we're going to have a, a poll in a, a moment about um, some mitigation options. Again, uh, confidential, anonymous, we're just interested to see amongst our audience what's, what's happening out there and, and, and after what Jane and Alistair have talked about. But Alistair, just a couple of quick questions for you. Um, can you clarify what is deemed a mixed farm? Yeah, great question. And it's one of the things we need to have a look at within um, within Overseer. I think it's along with, as, as you saw when uh, Kayo put the numbers up, the uh, the regions um, unfortunately, we, we, they are hard coded into the model. So um, some of those definitions are quite challenging to, uh, to deal with. Essentially, it's where we're looking at um, any farm which has got animals and crops other than fodder crops. So essentially, a lot of those farms throughout, you know, essentially pretty much you know, a, a whole ruck of sheep and beef and deer farms across Hawke's Bay and Canterbury and Otago and Southland, uh, where you've also got crops growing. Um, whether that be, you know, contract for waddies or, or, you know, you're growing cereals or you're growing seeds as well. All of those go into the mixed pot, unfortunately. But uh, certainly when we go through, we can we can look at within the aggregated reporting how many of those farms have got uh, beef and sheep on them as well. Uh, and we can see that it's sort of 99 percent plus uh, of those mixed farms have got have got beef and or sheep on them. Yeah, so basically the, um, um, the definition of the um uh, mixed farm types is the um, farms with uh, non-dairy animals with uh, crop blocks, as uh, Alistair mentioned. Thank you, Kayo. Um, and I hope that's uh, answered the question that came in. But by all means, um, fire in if you need clarification from whoever it was sent that in. Now, this is another one for you, Alistair. Um, and I'll read it out because I'm not sure I 100% understand <laughs> it myself. But how many files are overriding greenhouse gas footprint? Yep. Is there a need to at this stage, or is this only recommended if your system is significantly different from default? Yeah, so it's it's so, so I think I, I, I get where Sally's going with this question. It's when you go through, and we'll we'll touch on it in a wee bit um, when we look at the uh, the data entry tabs. There's a data entry tab within Overseer FM um, labeled GHG, and that's where you can go in and um, override the defaults for effectively some of those CO2 things that Jane's just been going through. So there's some modeling in there. Um, there's some modeling defaults in there which allow for electricity use, which allow for uh, distance to meat works, distance to the stockyards, distance to fertilizer plants, um, the methods of application for fertilizer, all of those things. And you can go in and override those if you wish to. Essentially, what we're advising people is, is that really, unless unless somebody is asking you to, um, it's not really worth the effort of, of going in and doing it. Um, if people are going for things like the TOI2 certification, then, then that's uh, where they need to be going in and entering that. Um, a couple of the milk companies are asking their suppliers to do that uh, and put in the details. Um, but it's certainly something, it's, it's very much optional. Um, it's, it, and it's really then if you, as you say, it's if you're significantly different uh, from uh, from what the norm might be. So I think from memory, something like 30, 30K is the assumed difference from a FERT store. You know, if you're if you're significantly different from that, you might want to go in and, and put that in. But it's certainly it's certainly not something that needs to be done at this stage. Excellent. Thanks, Alistair. And right. uh, I'm 
trusting that answered the question, but if not, um, ask any further clarification in, in the chat or, or text to Jane and we'll, we'll make sure that gets addressed. So we will move on to our third poll, and this one's a, a larger one. Um, there's several questions, so scroll down, please. It should be up on the screen now. And we're just asking what um, uh, greenhouse gas mitigation actions um, apply or, or you are using on your farm. So feel free to um, let us know what you think or what you've been uh, doing on your place. We'll give that one 30 seconds or a minute to tick along. And as I say, there's uh, four parts to that. So it's one you, you need to, to scroll down. So I'll just clarify on this one. Are we talking here that people have already done or that they are considering? Uh, either either. Aaron, okay. I think originally when we pulled this together, we were thinking, you know, stuff that you're already doing. Awesome. Thanks, Karina. No problems. Cool. We'll give that another 25, 30 seconds and then... I'll give Katrina the nod to close it off and share the results so we can see what people are trying. Again, these are covered in, in some depth in the, the workshops that Beef and Lamb New Zealand run. So if you haven't already been to one, feel free to, to find, we'll talk at the end about how you can find out about those. Feel free to get along there, free and fairly comprehensive as well. And some really good people come along and um, facilitate those and, and take you through the different things. But again, that key point is this isn't a recipe saying this is what you must do. These are menus of options for you to choose from that uh, may or may not work for you or may or not be suitable. Excuse me. All right. Looks like that's slowing down. So we'll just give it another five seconds, Katrina, I think, and then we'll pull that one to a close. All right. I'm going to close that one off, Katrina, and then just um, share the results again so people can see what uh, what the range was. Right now. Okay, we are getting well ahead of time, which is great. We're getting through the stuff. So I'm going to hand back over. It's Alistair once again for um, part three, Alistair. Cool. Thanks, Aaron. Great. So if you remember when we, uh, when we left off, we were comparing two analyses. And once you do that, then what you'll do is you create this farm summary report. Um, so you can then, that enables you to have a look at, you know, the before and after, essentially. Um, one of the things we've been able to do with this, which I think is a, is a massive improvement on what we had with the old um, legacy software, which was pretty horrific all the way through, but, but this really starts to show the power of having the, uh, the, the software that we've got now with Overseer FM, is, is the software can then go through the two analyses and go, okay, this is the difference. And you can sit here and look at what those differences are right the way throughout the, uh, the system. So looking at the physical characteristics, the nutrient use, greenhouse gases, drainage and wetlands, animals, irrigation, and fertilizer structures, right the way through there. Really important when we're looking at this. So one of the things that we can do here, you'll notice there's a little box up here in the top right hand corner, farm impact report. Um, you hit that button, we'll do that a wee bit later on. That generates a PDF document that you can include as part of your beef and lamb or, or other farm plan, um, either as a print off or, or as an as a electronic copy. Um, and within that, you can include your actions that you've got as part of this nutrient section of your farm plan. And as you can see here, we've got four actions that we're driving towards for this particular FEP. Um, so we're going to add some riparian strips. Um, we're going to irrigate better. We're going to fence off a wetland area and we're going to, we're going to shift to plantain uh, and look at those benefits, which Jane was touching on before. Um, but also as well, just as important, you know, let's make sure we're writing down the good stuff that we've already done. You know, we've seen this through the sort of fresh water change process. You know, we sometimes forget to note down what we've already done. Uh, this farm's already moved from using urea to um, urease inhibitor treated products. So we've reduced greenhouse gas emissions that way. Um, so that's how we've even got to the, the before that we're at. 
Um, and we've got the before and after situation there in the numbers uh, to be able to see um, where we are and, and where we're going to get to and, and what the changes look like being. So to make changes, um, we can really do one of two things. We can go through and, and change the data in each of the tabs. And that's not something we're going to go through tonight. If you've got an Overseer FM account, jump in there and take a look if you haven't before. You know, if someone's been doing that work for you, go in there and see the information that's in there. Um, I would say you can't break it, don't worry. Um, you know, it's a pretty robust system. Um, and, and you can see this on the right hand side, is that tab that I was talking about uh, in answer to Sally's question around GHGs. Um, so you can go in and make changes manually, or we've got this little tool that we've got highlighted called the scenario tool. Um, and that enables us to um, take a look at a, a small number at the moment, and we're gonna, we'll, we'll increase that over time, um, of uh, scenarios where you can get the software to do the work for you. Um, one of the things that's really important with Overseer is, is, is really understanding that we need to keep the system in balance. Um, you know, two of the great stories that I've heard from consultants, uh, one of them down here in Canterbury was, you know, no disrespect to the gentleman concerned, um, this consultant sat down with him and, and gave him his baseline numbers and said, look, you know, this is what we need to do. We need to have a look at making some pretty big changes because uh, this is where you are. Um, and, uh, you know, got an excited phone call three hours later to say, look, I've reduced my nitrogen loss by 20%. Isn't that bloody brilliant? And, um, and the consultant sitting there scratching his head going, well, mm, not quite sure how you manage that. What did you do? And he goes, oh, I just changed the soil type. And then you could hear the cogs ticking around in the guy's head and going, yeah, that's not really a mitigation, is it? I can't really do that. Um, so it's about making sure that if we are making a change in, in the analysis, that it's, that it's realistic. Um, so, you know, if we go in and say, we're gonna change N fertilizer, um, if you change it, take N fertilizer out, you're either gonna have to bring more feed in uh, or do something to grow more feed elsewhere in the system or you're gonna to have to reduce your stocking rate and, uh, and look at your animal types across the farm. So this scenario tool enables you to do that and make sure that you keep that system balanced. Um, and once you've done that, you can then jump through and you'll be able to see, okay, well, here's the before we put the scenario in place. And in this case, we're, gonna, we're not gonna go through the detail. You can do that yourselves in your own time. We're changing the nitrogen fertilizer. We're gonna reduce our nitrogen fertilizer. Uh, and by doing that and changing to uh, some imported silage, um, we're managing to get reductions across uh, the three gases that we're looking at this evening. Um, and we're also, just remember, we've got this other little wee metric in here, which we won't talk about much tonight, but you know, going back to that stuff that I touched on uh, back at the start, uh, the food miles uh, work that was done by Ag Research back in the early 2000s, um, you, know, you can go into Overseer FM and have a look at what is your footprint per kg of product. Um, so whether that be, you know, milk solids for the dairy guys that may be on here, or whether that's looking at meat, um, or in the, indeed for those guys in the mixed farms, looking at the, uh, the, the kilos of, uh, of, of um, ECO2 per, uh, per, per tonne of produce uh, in an arable system as well. So you can see what those are, and those are the figures at the farm gate. So we're not looking at anything that goes past the farm gate, but we're just looking at what happens to the farm gate uh, within your system. So if we run that scenario and we're happy with it, then we can sit there and we can go, okay, I can, I can overwrite it. And we've very deliberately made it. So you have to deliberately overwrite it and, and type in overwrite so you don't make any mistakes. So, you know, we know we're all, uh, we're all sometimes uh, a little bit quick with the old mouse button. Um, so we've tried to make it so you don't make, uh, it's, it's not too easy to uh, accidentally make some changes. Now we can then go back to um, and use the compare tool again um, and look at our reporting for uh, the two years. Um, and all of these results, you can then also look at sharing and comparing within the farm groups that I sort of mentioned that you might have uh, within your account that you might have access to um, on that front page. So this was something that was developed uh, for the software alongside some catchment groups. So it could be catchment groups, it could be producer groups, it could be you know, a group of family farms, whatever it might be. Um, and that enables you then to share your information, um, like your nitrogen loss, your P loss, your greenhouse gas numbers um, amongst those farms, uh, and to be able to look at how you can, how you can make changes as a group uh, to make improvements. Um, and you, know, you, can, you can put together a, a catchment action plan from that, as well as having your own individual farm plan. 
So if we're happy with where we've got to with our FEP 2025, that's when we can sit here and we can hit the print button and we can look at the print preview uh, and we can generate this farm impact report, which produces a nice, um, you know, well, well formatted document, as I say, um, as a PDF or, or print to paper um, and, and use that as part of your farm plan. Um, very clear about, you know, when it was printed, who printed it, what version of Overseer, always a hot topic, um, and, uh, and get all of the information through that way. So that takes us through, you know, getting into Overseer, having a look at, uh, you know, putting the data in, making some changes to some scenarios, putting together a plan. Um, what do we get when we do that, when we're looking at, at greenhouse gas reporting? So the top of the page when we look at the greenhouse gas reporting is about emissions by source. Um, and this is a, you know, this, this particular demonstration farm, you know, it's, it's a reasonably typical sheep and beef system. Um, just as we've seen within that sort of three to three to six thousand uh, kg per hectare range that we saw earlier. Um, obviously, most of that coming from the enteric methane, but we can see, you know, some other areas where we've got, you know, excreta in the paddock, nitrogen fertilizer, the indirect losses coming from the soil from that end fertilizer application, um, and then the CO2 uh, applications. Um, one of the most commonly asked questions, I guess, that we get at the moment is, um, okay, but you know some of those. You know, touching on on, on what uh, Karina was talking about earlier. Obviously, only some of these sources are included within Hewaka. Um, and you know, once that gets finalised, and once we know what actually needs to be reported, uh, then we would envisage you know adding an additional uh, diagram into this page to be able to explain you know what that information is that's in here, uh, which is going to be you know, again you're going to need to send through. Uh, to that calculator, which was was touched on earlier by by Jane, I think, um, and you know certainly from from the early conversations we've had with them, we would see that as a sort of a a, a zero and IRD type relationship from something like Overseer to that calculator. You know, you'd still be able to use Overseer for understanding your farm system, for looking at making changes, and we'll have a button there that you press that sends the the necessary information through to the calculator. And, and that does that somewhere else and, and, and gives you the information you need from them. Um, you know, this is very much about you understanding your farm system and you understanding where those losses are, are taking place within that farm system. Now, when we went out to, when we came out to farmers in 2019 and um, did a roadshow around the country, I think we did 23 workshops around the country from memory. Um, you know, the, one of the big things that came back from uh, farmers and consultants and growers was, you know, it's great that we can really easily see what our greenhouse gas emissions are. What about the good stuff we're doing? You know, what about the, uh, the stuff that we're growing on the farm that's uh, sequestering carbon? Now, we haven't got as far as, as soil carbon yet. Um, that's still a, 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 you know, a, piece of, a piece of science which is underway. Um, but what we have got and what we added in then in, uh, in October uh, 2019 was the carbon stock tool. So obviously it's always had, um, certainly as long as I can remember, which is early 2000s, um, uh, the ability to have forestry blocks within an, anal an, an analysis. Um, and what we did here was enable you to put forests into those uh, trees and scrub blocks. So whether that's production forestry or whether it's natives, um, and that enables you then to have a look at what the carbon sequestration may be on your farm. Now, we've done that by hooking up to the MPI uh, lookup tables. Um, which are part of the uh, part of the inventory, um, but very much this is geared as a guide for you. So there's a whole load of caveats right the way throughout it. This is not an ETS tool. Um, you know, you can do with this what you like. If you want to put your shelter belts in and see what they're sequestering, put your shelter belts in and see what they're sequestering. Um, if you want to put your your hundred year old uh, native bush in, which is which according to the uh, the lookup tables is no longer sequestering. Um, and we won't talk about that today either, um, but you can see what that carbon stock is overall. Now, one of the things that's really important to just have a look at here is when you, if you do put the forestry blocks in and you can see here, we've done that, we've got a bush block, we've got some shelter belts, we've got some tree blocks and we've obviously got the farm total here. Um, we can look at the impact of harvesting uh, some trees, which took place a couple of years ago. And that's where we see some, uh, some release of carbon. Um, and then we've got the new the new tr production forestry taking off. But you know, it's really important to not confuse the cumulative number and the annual number. So cumulatively, this farm 
in year one has got 16,000 tons of carbon, um, but it's actually lost 402 tons of carbon this year. So if we add the 402 tons of carbon from harvesting those forests, that forest, uh, to the 1600 tons of emissions that we've got, we're at just over 2000 tons of emissions uh, for the year ECO2 equivalent. If we then go ahead though to year 15, then that's when we come back into the positive. So we're, we've, we're back up to 17,000 tons of, uh, of cumulative, uh, but actually we've accumulated 518 tons in year 15. So when we look at the changes we've made to our system, we've brought our emissions uh, down by around 100, down to 1583, and we're also taking another 518 off that. So you know, we've got a 49% a, a reduction um, from our original target um, by, uh, by uh, including our trees. But we've just got to be conscious that, you know, giveth and taketh away. So we've got that challenge when we're harvesting trees, we are going to lose some carbon. Uh, and so it's maybe then around, you know, if, you, if you're doing production forestry, uh, making sure that you're, you're managing the timings of those to, uh, to mitigate that throughout the cycle. So lastly, just touching on um, some of those bits that, uh, that James talked on through, through the eco-efficiency benefits, and then also through the, uh, the options for managing uh, the gaseous losses. Um, so the, the, the bits which are all in, uh, in uh, red boxes, those are all already able to be modeled uh, within uh, Overseer FM. There's a lot of things in there. Some of the, the eco-efficiency stuff doesn't really come into uh, the nutrient side of things. Um, and you know, we're, we're very hopeful that as we go forward, you know, there's obviously work being done, particularly in things like the low emission feeds and the future options, the boluses. Um, and, and vaccines, looking at how those things uh, will be able to be incorporated into Overseer. So yeah, something like plantain, we've obviously got the uh, nitrogen loss reduction effects of plantain in there, and that work then to, uh, to provide further information to uh, enable us to include that within the modeling uh, is being done at the moment so that we're able to include those benefits in there as well from a GHG perspective. So you know, there's a lot in there already that allows you to be able to look at it. And, and, I, and I guess, you know, from, from our perspective, our challenge is to make sure that we're dragging those new mitigations in as quickly as possible uh, so that we're able to uh, continue, continue to offer you those uh, choices for farmers that uh, Kaya was talking about earlier. And that's open to questions. Awesome. Thank you, Alistair. So we do have a couple of questions. So what I'm going to do now is actually go through and I think I know who the questions are going to, but um, others of our speakers may hook in if they want. So we are going to wrap up. We're well ahead of, well, reasonably ahead of time, which is good. So if you still want to send in a question in chat or, or text, we've got a few minutes to do that. And then at the end, we'll wrap up with a, where you can find out more information, where you can get hold of the, the recordings of these uh, down the track and a little bit of feedback on you on how the webinar went and how we could improve it next time or what we, we should have covered off. Um, one quick question, this is probably for both over there and the Beef and Lamb New Zealand crew, is just um, for farms that are grass only and low input, no, or what we'd call low input, no fertiliser, no regrassing, uh, very low inputs, are any issues for Overseer or the green uh, Beef and Lamb tool or other tools for farms like that? I don't think it makes it easier because you've got less data entry to put in. Um, I think it's it's you know it should it should be it should be reasonably easy uh, to go in. I think one of the um, one of the bits which is is often misunderstood around overseer. So um, at the heart of overseer is is an energy calculator. So essentially, if you sit there and say I've got three hundred animals um, purely on grass, then if you don't put any supplements in and you don't put any crops in, the model will assume that all of that energy must have come from grass. And because you've told it that you've, you've managed to support those animals and they've managed to grow across the curve of, of whatever information you've put in there, then the model will look at those parameters and say, OK, well, within that, then this is what you've produced in terms of pasture. Uh, and this is how you're utilizing your nutrients. Um, so, you know, Overseer assumes you're operating at, at good management practice. Um, that can sometimes be a challenge. Um, but, you know, it's certainly in, a, in an instance like that, yeah, should be no problem representing it within the software. Thanks, Alistair. I'm not sure whether one of the team from Beef and Lamb, one I imagine it's exactly the same for the Beef and Lamb New Zealand calculator, that there's no issues around farm type as such or inputs. No. You don't have to have a certain amount of inputs to be to model it. No, that's right. I mean, I'll hand over to Jane, who's got a bit more of that, you know, obviously that technical expertise there. 
Um, but you know, beef and lamb's GHG calculator starts with with livestock, so livestock uh, type and the number of animals held over that farming system for you know for that year. So um, if animals are brought in and off, it, it looks at that. If these are if um, if your animals are staying on the whole time, then it looks at your opening and closing um, stock reconciliation and just models the emissions from you know that stock class and the number of livestock that you got on your property, and then has a look at things like fertilizer. So if you're not adding anything then that's a zero um, and and also includes um, con consideration of sequestration. I think probably the challenging thing in this scenario um, both will give you an emissions profile but I think probably the, the challenge will be um, if you're very low imp input, input systems you've got very limited mm. opportunities for redu reducing that further so um, I think you know you'd, you'd want to tell a story around uh, being low input um, in what you've already done uh, rather than looking at um, further reductions would be my call on that. Brilliant. Thanks, Karina. Jane? I don't know whether you want to add anything to that, Jane? No, that was really good. Right. No, but you're online, I think, because the next question is actually directed towards you around um, liming, and it was um, quite a detailed question, but I think in essence is, um, are there issues or how does it... Uh, treat what's what's the use of lime basically somebody maybe running at a higher ph or i guess actually thinking about it you know somebody in a certain years putting on capital lime to lift their ph wherever it may be so yeah um yeah. what what's the issue is there an issue there no, i guess the, the issue in terms of the the emissions associated with that lime they come from um the manufacture of lime the um transport the spreading and then also the dissolution when that's applied to to land so it's basically saying that um if you're applying lime that isn't effectively being used for pasture production or for you know to increase your um, your fertility, then um, your efficiency of those GHG emissions is reduced. But it's not punishing those that, um, regardless of of what their pH is, it's a lot of those emissions are associated with the manufacture, etc., of that lime. Awesome. Thanks, Jane. And next question, and again, for those of you if, you, if you want some extra explanation, feel free to fire and chat before we wrap up. But the next question is, um, and I guess this one, not sure who will answer this one, but is there a minute, what's the minimum farm size um, that where farms are required to, I guess, get in this process of knowing their greenhouse gas numbers? I'll try that one. So there's, there's two different definitions, and, and sorry, I don't have the, um, so there's two different definitions. i start there. So the first definition that Hiwaka Ekanoa uses is essentially is a dairy, a dairy system, um, or, you know, for the sheep and beef systems, a farm that's over 80 hectares. And so that um, definition applies to the milestone of 100% of farmers knowing their numbers by the end of this year. Um, the definition for those farms that will need to be part of the 2025 pricing framework is different from that. Um, I, will, I will grab that uh, and pop it into chat for those that are interested, but it has a different, different, different definition. Yeah. Corina, um, my understanding is the uh, Hewaka Ekenoa recommended certain definitions um, and it's now being uh, considered by the government. So as of now, we do not have the definitive definition which will apply um, beyond 2025. Is that right? Yeah, thank you very much for, for, um, for you know, for, for clarifying that, KO. Yeah. So the only definition we've got um, is the one that applies to the milestone. Uh, the recommendations from He Walker Canal are just that, just recommendations. And we're yet to see where the government lands on that. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right. So I don't see any questions that have come in, but we have got a wee few minutes yet because what we're going to do now is just um, a last poll. And this one is not so much about uh, the greenhouse gases. This is just some feedback for us on, on how the webinar went and, and how you found it. So if we can get that, um, that last poll up, please. There we go. So it'll be on your screen. So this is just, um, yeah, for us to get a bit of feedback on on how you think it went and um, how we, we've done and what we could do better next time or, or what we could do possibly a future webinar on. There's a, three questions there. So again, it's one to, to scroll down, please. Um, just while we're doing that, I am just going to quickly wrap up. We 
we'll make the recording of this available. What we'll probably do is, in fact, what we'll definitely do is chop it up into some smaller segments and then have it on the Beef and Lamb New Zealand YouTube and, and share that left, right and centre. So we will email you out when that's all, all ready to go. So you can go back and, and watch it at your leisure if you really want to, or just watch the bit you, you want to find and um, when a, if something you want to cover off again. But that's not the only way to get some help. Um, Overseer on their website have a support section where it's both got a series of, I guess you'd call them frequently asked questions, where you may be able to find your answer or the contact email or the, the contact button basically to get in touch with Overseer and, and ask a question. Uh, Beef and Lamb New Zealand do much the same on our website. There's an email there or an 0800 number if you want to um, give us a call and get some help or, or talk to one of the local team. Um, in the chat at the moment, Katrina's put up there the link where you can um, find on our website any events that are planned in your neck of the woods. If you want to attend one of our greenhouse gas calculator and action plan workshops or one of our the larger um, farm plan environment module workshop as well. So that's all there. Um, but look, I think uh, we haven't had any other questions in. I think is, is there anything um, from our speakers have thought of, want to add or, or want to chuck in now before we, we wrap it all up? No, all good from me, thanks. Silence is golden. And I actually see uh, Sally Lee has put uh, the definition of a farm in Hewaka Ekanoa in the chat there, if you want to go and check against that. But as the team said, that's, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, that's a proposal at the moment, but uh, that's what we're waiting to hear, what the final decision will be from central government. All right. I think we can uh, call that, close the poll off. Thank you very much for that. We'll uh, have a look at that later and adjust what we do. But I think last chance, if the team of speakers have had any last thoughts of something they want to cover or bring up. No, nope. and there'd be no more questions in the uh, chat. I'll just say thank you all very much for attending. We really appreciate you coming on to these things. It's been a very popular webinar, um, both the people that could make it and those that couldn't make it, but want to actually see some of the material afterwards. So obviously a a bit of a hot button topic at the moment and um, you can follow up with us um, via email or 0800 number etc if you've got some questions that uh, if you like me they're going to occur to you um, tomorrow morning while you're having a coffee or, or something like that so but in the meantime look thanks for me uh, thanks from all the team and uh, we will catch you on the next one bye bye